Here's the thing. I've always liked Halloween. Not as much as some, but more than a lot. And we've harvested our pumpkins. This one's going to my grandkids and daughter-in-law. Size that puppy. I have to see how much this weighs before we actually give it away. 57 pounds. There you go, Gina. You got a pumpkin? Yeah, you can touch my hand. I don't have a mask on, Kai. Hug. This is my grandson who makes YouTube videos. And a magic pinky yellow that I shake and it turns into my bow. Oh, cool. So you actually do like a stop action and cut and replace it? But to black with hip, hip, hip tan. We'll post it, and can I download and use that clip in my video? All right, we'll put it in the Halloween video. Hi, my name is Kai, and I'm going to be playing measures 49 through to the end of 56. But I have a problem I need to fix. This is not my bow. But there's a useful feature in this. You give it a little shake and, ah, there we go. Tightened and it is fully rosined. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Hiya, Tammy. Okay. I know there's a lot of debate within some circles about whether you should celebrate Halloween or not. You know, the whole idea of introducing your kids to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Star Wars and stuff like that, you know, it's just a slippery spiritual slope to go down. But Halloween has a lot to go for it. First off, it has a really long and storied history behind it. It might have started with the celebrations to the Roman goddess Pomona which was the goddess of fruits and seeds that they would worship and celebrate in the fall, or perhaps it came from the Celtic holiday of Samhain. I hope I'm getting that right. My old Celtic just isn't as good as it used to be, which was the autumn festival. It was an agricultural festival, a lot like Thanksgiving today. So it depends on which European traditions and which denominations as they immigrated to the United States, what they brought with them as far as Halloween goes. So the Puritans, when they came over, they were against anything that smacked of what they called papism. And so all the holidays, all the celebrations, even Christmas was taboo. But then when the Catholics came over, especially the Irish immigrants during the Great Potato Famine, they brought with them their rich celebration of Halloween, which included the carving of pumpkins. They used to make them out of turnips. And then the last 20, 30 years, the increasing commercialization of Halloween. It's to the point now where in 2010, we spent over $6 billion celebrating Halloween. That's more than the annual gross domestic product of the state of North Dakota. As a result of the mixing of all these influences, today Halloween is sort of a holiday that's sort of cut off from religious or cultural affiliations. As a result, it's a holiday that's open to anyone to celebrate. And the thing that perhaps I like best about it is how the parents take their children out from house to house around the neighborhood to collect candy and go trick or treating. That's really interesting because if you look at Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, any of the other big holidays, they're all family oriented. They're very insular around our small group. It's a very, very different holiday and it has this very strong communal aspect to it, which I think has a lot to offer. Now this raises the problem for this year because how are we gonna celebrate Halloween with coronavirus? Are we gonna have the kids come up and go get close to them or not? 
I was actually thinking about getting one of those t-shirt guns where they blast the t-shirts out with an air gun to people at concerts and I'd be able to shoot it out to the kids in the streets. My wife nixed that idea though. She said that having a t-shirt gun in my hands during Halloween would lead to all sorts of legal problems. And of course, I couldn't just let it sit there and so I had to geek out a little bit. And what I did is I went into Google's Ngram search function. In that, you can go back and you search for the frequency of the use of words or phrases in English printed literature going back to 1500. And what's very interesting, and I'll put these charts up for you here, is that it really starts with the term All Saints Eve, referring to the night before All Saints Day, which is the Christian holiday where we celebrate all of those who have passed away before us, within the faith. But All Saints Eve really had its heyday from about 1750 to about 1800, and then it died out. Then we have kind of a period where there's not much as far as cultural dominance. Starting around 1900, All Saints Day was replaced by All Hallows Eve, which represents the Irish and the Scottish immigrants coming over and bringing, instead of saints, it's hallowed, all the holy ones evening. And that had its heyday from 1900 to 1950. Then starting around 1950, that died out and it was replaced by the popular term we use today, Halloween, where the contraction from All Hallowed Eve to All Hallow Eve got then shortened down just to Halloween. I know, it's kind of plain and boring vanilla, but that's the term we use today. One of the things you can't get around though is that Halloween is one of the best loved holidays of the year culturally, and All Saints Day is one of the most popular within the liturgical year. Within the lectionary cycle, All Saints Day or Halloween represents a shift from the chronological readings during ordinary or Pentecost season to readings that have much more of an eschatological or end times focus. We can really see this with how the lectionary cycle then sets us up for Christ the King Sunday, which is the last Sunday during the lectionary year. And on Christ the King, we celebrate Christ being seated on the throne as King of Kings, Lord and Lords, in the consummation of his reign and the destruction of all the forces of evil. Historically, All Saints Day has been a commemoration of all the saints who have preceded us within the church. Originally, All Saints Day was a Sunday where we commemorated and remembered all those who had been martyred before us, but whose names had been forgotten in the church. You can see this reflected in the reading for this Sunday, which is taken from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Now, every Friday night on the PBS NewsHour, they have a short segment at the end of their broadcast where they remember the lives of four or five people who had died that week from coronavirus. It reminds us of our fellow citizens and what they've gone through in this virus. But it's not just a sad remembrance of the loss of their lives, but it also reminds us of the contributions they made to their families and communities, the impact that these people had and how we're going to miss them now. I think this segment from the PBS NewsHour gives us a really nice perspective on how to celebrate Halloween, but in particular, All Saints Day. I think this should help us have two perspectives. The first one is, is that we're part of a much larger family. It's not that we're members of just our little local church or the American Christian community, but this is something that stretches around the world and it stretches across time also. We are part of that same body that goes back to the beginning of the church in the first century AD. The second thing is, we're not just grieving over the loss of these individuals that have come before us, but we're also celebrating where the church is going. But it also helps us to have a perspective about our ultimate destiny and where we will end up. This is really reflected in the collect prayer that's prayed in many of the churches that still use a form of the Book of Common Prayer today. O Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so as to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for them that unfeignedly love thee, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you all have a great Halloween and All Saints Day, and I hope this has contributed a little bit to your remembrance of these days. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button so that you know when I post new material, and share it with your friends. Until next week, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you.